Hi guys, it is an absolutely spectacularly gorgeous, and I mean over the top, postcard perfect day here in the collapse of global industrial civilization, where we have stumbled into Friday, September 4th, 2020, I believe here at uh, Bugs in a Jar Farm. This is Collapse Chronicles. I am Sam Mitchell, and this is my little co-pilot, Sancho Panza. And uh, I have got to get back to my bog garden, which I'm pretty much going to be finishing out today. So I'm excited about that. But before I go, since it is Friday, doing what I do every Friday, and that's bringing you my ecological meltdown roundup rant from mongabay.com, but even before I do that, just a, uh, a few pieces of housekeeping and announcements here. Oh yeah, first of all, I want to send out a big thank you to uh, kind-hearted uh, <clears throat> listener James, Brother James, for his very kind donation to the tiny exclusive club of the Collapse Chronicles Patreon page. So I really appreciate it, James, and anybody who has ever supported my work on Patreon or PayPal or whatever. I really, really do appreciate it, guys. It makes me feel like I'm not entirely talking to myself. What other announcements? Oh, yes, I uh, had the pleasure of having an interview uh, with this fellow. I don't know if, if Danny Shine is his real name or not, but uh, Danny Shine and I had a very spirited hour-long conversation posted over uh, on his channel. I love it how, how Danny put up the warning, warning, there is no hope in this video. Sam is very suspicious of what he calls hopium. Please do not watch this if you cannot cope with hopelessness. <laughs> so anyway, if uh, you have any interest in uh, hearing uh, the two of us gab for an hour, you can go over there. And I honestly don't remember if I mentioned, when was it, uh, a few weeks ago, I had the pleasure of having uh, an hour-long conversation uh, with fellow Doomer Michael Dowd, and I honestly can't remember if I mentioned that, so I'm going to go ahead and put the links to uh, my conversations with uh, both Danny and Michael on here. If any of you, for any reason, are wondering who I am or what I am about, uh, these two hours of, of interviews should uh, send you screaming back to your cute cat videos. And finally, particularly for the people around here in the Finger Lakes of New York, but anywhere, we are going to have our annual Doomer Meetup, uh, which kind of coincides with my 61st birthday here at Bugs in a Jar Farm outside of Ithaca, New York is going to be Saturday, September 19th. That's two weeks from tomorrow, starting about 2 o'clock in the afternoon with a rain date of Saturday, September 26th. And let's all hope the weather is, it should be absolutely beautiful. First day of fall, somewhere around there. So if by any chance you would uh, want to join us on that and meet some of your fellow Doomers, you're certainly invited and just send me an email at collapsechronicles at gmail.com. Just send me a private email, collapsechronicles at gmail.com, and uh, I will send you information on how to find bugs in a jar farm. And we do hope to see you here. It would be nice to meet some of you folks. Okay, but with all of that out of the way, let's do what we do every Friday, and that's check in uh, with Rhett Butler the, and the boys and girls over at mongabay.com for, uh, I guess this will 
be the uh, the kickoff September uh, newsletter. That, well, it comes out every week, and uh, you, you know, Rhett, as I said, he is probably the single most honest uh, environmental reporter about the corona panic. So let's just get this one out of the way. There might be one more, uh, but for anybody still suffering the delusion that the corona panic is A, good for this planet, and B, this outlandish notion that the, the corona panic has decreased deforestation. Let's go over to Cambodia. Under the cover of COVID-19, loggers plunder Cambodian wildlife sanctuary. Yes, Kio Sima Wildlife Sanctuary in Cambodia has lost almost a fifth of its forest cover since 2010, largely to, wow, agricultural expansion, illegal logging, and land grabbing inside the protected area. Yes, uh, the sanctuary hosts some of the last known populations of threatened primates like the, some sort of langur and I love this one, the southern yellow-cheeked crested gibbon. Yes, Cambodia does have laws in place, yes, I'm sure it does, to protect sanctuaries and crack down on violators, but environmental watchdogs say enforcement is lacking because the authorities are largely complicit in the plunder of natural resources. And now, the COVID-19 pandemic, otherwise known as the corona, corona panic, has exacerbated the problem by locking out international conservation organizations that would otherwise maintain a presence on the ground. Uh, and, and what is true in Cambodia, uh, you can b better believe is true all over the planet, especially in the Brazilian Amazon, where, uh, you know, all of these planet eaters are using the corona panic economic lockdowns uh, as cover to plunder this planet. Uh, the corona panic has given a, a, a just a pass, <clears throat> a get-out-of-jail-free card to do whatever you want to this planet. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> but I realize nobody on this channel wants to hear what Rhett Butler or I have to say about the corona panic destroying the planet. So, uh, good Lord. I, I, again, I'm just going to get to about half of these. Uh, okay, we actually have some good news for now. For now, officials quash a plan to develop the Philippines' biggest copper mine. All right, so the local government uh, has canceled uh, an agreement with Sagittarius Mines to develop a six billion dollar copper and gold mine on the island of Mindanao. Uh, good luck on uh, sticking on sticking with that an indigenous group that has taken up arms against the project has warned of more bloodshed should the project go ahead on their ancestral lands. Let's take a wild guess who will take the brunt of that bloodshed when this local 
uh, <clears throat> decision is overruled by the federal government of the Philippines, who, you know, are a lot more interested in a six billion dollar copper and gold mine than they are on some pesky indigenous tribes threatening to take up arms to protect their home. All right, let's see. Well, I'm just going to say it. Park Rangers, the guardians of Ecuador's biodiversity face job insecurity. Yes, I will let you decide for yourself what that is all about because you've heard enough about the C word. Of course, uh, you know, any sort of environmental protector, uh, be they rangers, be they uh, environmental organization people. Uh, anyway, I think we get it, Rhett. <clears throat> well, I get it. You will not believe this, that Europe's richest countries are importing Brazilian beef linked to millions of tons of greenhouse gas emissions. Who would have thunk it? Millions of tons of emissions are embedded in Europe's Brazilian beef imports every year, equivalent to the annual footprint of between 300,000 and 2.4 million EU citizens, according to a new report by London-based NGO EarthSight. Yes, uh, Brazil it is predicted that Brazil will see a rise of its emissions between 10% and 20% this year, uh, thanks partly a lot to this. Deforestation and cattle ranching account for over half of Brazil's carbon emissions. Uh, Two companies were found to be responsible for almost a quarter of the emissions, while just eight cattle farms in the Amazon were responsible for over half of all emissions. Do you think so? All right. Again, guys, I don't have the time to get to all of this. You will not believe this one. Survival of indigenous communities at risk as Amazon fire season advances. The number of major Amazon wildfires, and this is a distinction between major and all the others. The number of major Amazon wildfires this year has more than doubled since August 13th, with most of those fires being illegal. 674 major fires uh, were detected between the end of May and the 1st of September this year, with a sharp increase in wildfires well, wildfires, uh, anthropogenic fires, uh, inside ind indigenous territories in the last two weeks, raising concerns among indigenous leaders. Uh, indigenous groups are being left to fight the fires on their own without any support from government institutions. Bra Obama, Brazil's environmental agency, has been largely stripped of funds and lacks adequate equipment to fight the blazes, while the army sent to the Amazon in May is reportedly failing to suppress most of the fires. Yes. 
Okay, and that goes on, but I think we get it. Skipping a head. <clears throat> wow. Just half of major timber and pulp pulp suppliers are committed to zero deforestation. <laughs> Just half. Are, are, are committed. You know how, how they word this. Uh, that, that's, uh, that's implying that the other half is committed. The other half of timber and pulp corporations are committed to, uh, to zero deforestation. How is a timber and pulp corporation committed to zero deforestation? R Rhett Butler knows as well as I do how, uh, how hilarious this is. The world's 100 most significant timber and pulp companies score just 22.6% on average when assessed across 175 environmental, social, and governance uh, indicators uh, according to the latest assessment by the Zoological Society of uh, London. 2020 is the first waypoint towards the 2014 New York Declaration on Forest goal of eliminating natural forest loss by 2030. I wish you could see uh, one mile from me in the middle of a New York state forest. What is going on? <clears throat> the New York Declaration on Forest goal of uh, eliminating natural forest loss by 2030. Maybe they should start out in New York. But 44% of the companies still do not have a robust commitment to halting the conversion of natural ecosystems. Yes, climate change risk, assess uh, climate change risk assessments, which are not even a requirement of current forest management certification programs, are often viewed by companies as, quote, an optional extra and only 4% of firms provided a, an assessment of their future climate risk. Yes, more than half of companies are committed. Come on, Rhett. Uh, more than half of companies uh, claim and the greenwashing bullshit that they are committed to respecting the rights of local communities, but only 9% of them have published procedures for obtaining free prior informed consent from local communities. Huh. Just 11 firms provided evidence they are paying their workers minimum wage. Yes. Here is a hilarious one. Madagascar introduces stoves that burn rice husks instead of forest. That obviously begs the question, where is the rice being grown? Yes. Did you realize that Madagascar's dependence on fuel wood is contributing significantly to the island's deforestation? To meet demand, charcoal suppliers even take wood from protected areas. Wow. Uh, you know, the, the charcoal trade is one of the biggest examples of planet nibbling where, you know, when a area such as Madagascar vastly, you know, goes into ecological overshoot and outstrips its carrying capacity with no help from all of these, uh, you know, big timber companies and the usual list of suspects, 
uh, j just the local people trying to feed their families with no help from the planet eaters are doing a fine job of taking down the planet, but the social justice warriors have no interest in this inconvenient truth. You will never believe this, guys. This is why uh, I, I depend so heavily on mangabay.com and Rep Butler, because I never would have thought of this. Never would have crossed my mind if uh, Manga Bay wasn't bringing this to my attention. Do you believe that infrastructure plans are imperiling Latin America's forests? Wow. A recent analysis in the Journal of Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences um, warns of the danger to forests, communities, and biodiversity as a result of planned infrastructure. And, and of course, uh, a lot of this is talking about the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative, which is the single biggest infrastructure project uh, ever developed in the history of humanity, uh, is on the drawing boards now. Uh, which, who was it that I interviewed here last year calling correctly that the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative and all of these other infrastructure projects being planned across the planet are a much bigger short-term threat to this planet than climate change. Give one to Book Hermit the Chinese Belt and Road Initiative with no help from climate change will take down this planet. Yes, okay. Uh, okay. Indigenous Papuans' victory over palm oil plantation is shaky. <laughs> Do you think so? Okay, L again, we just heard this same story in the Philippines. Here it is repeating itself. Local authorities in Indonesia's West Papua province have revoked the permits for a 28,000 acre oil palm uh, concession. Uh, activists have welcomed the move, but note that the permits could have been scrapped much sooner for various other reasons, and they also criticized the central government uh, specifically the Environment Ministry for not reaffirming the government's recognition of the indigenous people's land rights, uh, which would have made the forest off limits to commercial exploitation without this official recognition from the Indonesian central government, the forest can still be licensed out for agriculture, activists point out, and just like is happening in that other story, you better believe this is a very small speed bump in the, uh, in the way. So what does indigenous leader Levi Sucre Romero have to say about the corona panic Corona panic caused by the unbalancing of nature. Yes, it is. Um, all right. Uh, anybody who died, I've mentioned this before. Uh, anybody who does not understand what hell on her on earth looks like needs to uh, 
go look at these Greenpeace photos from what is going on down there in the Amazon this year, you will see a photo of hell on earth. So in the middle of all this, what is going on with Brazil's most traffic, trafficked parrot? For Brazil's most trafficked parrot, the poaching is relentless. Every year between August and September, poachers in the Brazilian Cerrado steal turquoise-fronted parrot hatchlings from their nest to supply the exotic pet market. The main destination is the Sao Paulo metropolitan area where at least 12,000 baby birds are taken every year. Uh, conservationists say law enforcement efforts to tackle the trafficking have failed and warn that the ever-dwindling wild population of the bird will have ripple effects within the ecosystem. Do you think so? Uh, Okay, this is, uh, anyway, uh, good lord, guys, there's so much here. This is a uh, manga Bay spin on that big oil spill outside of Mauritius. Mauritians take to the street over oil spill and dolphin and whale deaths. Uh... People gathered in the thousands in the capital to protest the government's lackadaisical, that's my word, response to a recent oil spill. The Japanese-owned freighter uh, crashed into the coral reef barrier and has leaked about 1,000 tons of fuel. The stranding of at least 39 dolphins and whales near the site has sparked an outcry. Yep. Okay. I love the, this name, Asian Pulp and Paper. Uh, the most honest name of a planet eater. You will not believe this shocking headline. Paper giant APP linked to Indonesian peat clearing despite sustainability vow. I think this camera is still on. It's hard to tell. Uh, Greenpeace Southeast Asia has identified uh, about 3,500 hectares, otherwise known as 8,600 acres of peatland clearing in pulpwood <coughs> plantations in Sumatra supplying Asian pulp and paper. Hmm. This clearing happened despite APP having a no peatland and a no burning policy that it imposes on its suppliers. Hmm. APP has, of course, denied clearing the peatland or setting the fires. Yes, do you think so? How many times have we seen this headline, or a version of it, Madagascar giant frog is a new species, but also a deep fried delicacy. Once again, uh, <clears throat> you know, talking about how a newly described uh, species uh, is already on the uh, endangered species uh, list. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I'm just going to, uh, let's see, do I want to end up 
I, I, I'm just going to end up with this uh, one more. This is kind of a uh, manga base version of the planet of the humans that I wanted to wrap up with. There is a lot that I am skipping over just for time and realizing I'm talking to myself. So let's skip ahead. Okay. <clears throat> Our forest, the new coal, global alarm sounds as biomass burning surges as climate change rapidly escalates with worsening impacts and with standing forests vital to achieving global warming solutions, the forest biomass industry is booming. <clears throat> the industry frequently cuts standing forests to supply wood pellets to be burned in converted coal power plants. Though current science has shown that burning the world's forest to make electricity is disastrous for biodiversity, generates more emissions than coal generates, and is not carbon neutral, a UN policy established in 1997 erroneously counts energy produced from forest biomass as carbon neutral. As a result of this, nations pay power companies huge subsidies to burn wood pellets, propelling industry growth. <clears throat> Forests are now being cut in the US, Canada, Russia, Eastern Europe, and Vietnam to supply pellets to the UK, EU, and other nations who can claim the energy creates zero emissions when in fact it creates more emissions than the coal it is replacing. So far, the UN has turned a blind eye to closing the climate destabilizing carbon accounting loophole. Do you think so? Is, is there anybody on this planet still suffering any delusion that the United Nations uh, has this planet's uh, best interest at heart? But anyway, guys, I I'm kind of think my camera has already shut off and I understand that I am talking to myself, but for the one or two people who has made it to the end, uh, and if you want to show Rhett Butler and Manga Bay some love, uh, please thumb up this video and do subscribe when you're over here so you can get more of this doom and gloom coming across your computer every Friday. Uh, and if you do want to join kind-hearted uh, listener James in supporting my work on YouTube, there's plenty of ways to do that, and I really do appreciate the few people who have ever done that. And with that, uh, I'm going to get back to my bog garden uh, and suggest you get out there and enjoy this beautiful planet while you still can. Bye, guys. You ready to get back to the bog garden one more time, little dog? Say bye to the folks.